It's coming down to the wire. And there's good reason to believe that Kerry Lake will win. But it's not guaranteed. We don't know for sure. And it may come down to a legal battle over ballots. And it's very interesting. You take a look at someone like Kerry Lake. When you listen to the issues she cares about, it's yeah, you'd think Americans would actually agree with her on these things. And I think they do. I think the average American, when you look at polls, agrees with Carrie Lake. Then how is it that someone like Katie Hobbs wins? My friends, the Democrats are a cult voting block. They vote collectively. This was true of many Republicans for some time and is still true of Republicans today. They will go in many, not all, and they will actually vote just because someone's a Republican. So while people can complain about John Fetterman not being all with it, other people like Milo last night also equally complained about Walker in Georgia, saying he wasn't all with it either. And I'm being polite. Milo put it uh, another way. Um, If you didn't see the show last night, it was basically Milo Yiannopoulos monologue. And uh, and I mean that respectfully. I think it was it was absolutely fantastic. The point the points he was making about the MAGA movement and what they wanted from this election and what they did not get. And then we talked a little bit about censorship and moving forward in the members only show. So head over to TimCast.com. Watch the uncensored Milo Yiannopoulos show. And, and I'll just I'll love with you guys. It, it's not it's not as crazy. People might assume like he goes off. He's yelling. Like we argued a little bit, but uh, he's a smart guy. Milo is a very, very smart guy and perhaps one of the best uh, um, best PR guys for Donald Trump. I'll tell you this. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at what's going on with Carrie Lake. And, you know, she's very much in this Trump realm. And I, I think she's absolutely incredible. I'm a huge fan. And I think she's speaking about issues that matter to Americans. But she's, she's neck and neck with Katie Hobbs for several reasons. Now, again, I'll stress, it looks like she may actually win. But it's very, very tight. She's currently down. The polls, the votes that are coming in, we believe will end up favoring her. What you need to understand is that Democrats who go out and vote are not voting based on policy. They're voting based on fear. Almost every single pitch that Democrats put forward were fear based. They didn't say we are going to enact policy X, which should reduce the, the damage, you know, inflation for this reason. It was all like MAGA Republicans want insurrection. Donald Trump is a fascist. Donald Trump is a racist. Donald Trump is promoting extremist candidates. Donald Trump will take away your rights. They know that Donald Trump galvanized the Democratic base in 2018 and in 2020. And so it's the only thing they really have to go on. And now a lot of people are saying maybe it's time for Trump to bow out. I'm not so convinced after hearing what Milo Yiannopoulos had to say, because I'll just put it this way. We'll talk about this a bit more um, later in in, in my other segment, uh, probably at 4 p.m. But um, I will say that the response we got from people hearing Milo articulate their feelings, it's powerful. I'm just not so convinced that it works for Republicans the same way, but but, but we'll see. We'll see. For, for now, let's talk about what's going on with Carrie Lake. But my friends, before we do, I need your help. Today's the last day. It is the last day for us to get uh, uh, streams and purchases of our song, Genocide, Losing My Mind by Tim Cast. If you would kindly... Uh, or I should say, would you kindly purchase the song for 69 cents on iTunes? It's available on Amazon, and uh, you can also check it out on YouTube and watch the music video, which I'm sure many of you will get a kick out of because we took news anchors and media personalities and made them sing a song that directly insults them as liars, manipulators, trying to control your minds with lies. So with your support, I'm hoping that we can get a song like this to, to hit a uh, billboard. We've got good news. Tracking is, is working. Uh, it wasn't working on some of the uh, views we got with Only Ever Wanted, and we still hit the charts. I think the song will do way better. But uh, what I'm hoping for is with cultural content like this, that we actually have a method of impacting politics in a way most people don't realize. So I know it's, it's you know, a lot of people are like Tim's grifting or whatever. Look, I, I make I make music. I skate. I do a bunch of things. I'm not, I haven't put out a skate video yet. Maybe I will. But the point of doing songs like this right before the election is so that when regular people are tuning in and listening to music, engaging in non-political affairs, there is cultural influence outside of the establishment. Politics is downstream from culture. If we do not win by producing culture, TV shows, etc., that's, that's why that's been such a big focus, then, then you lose. 
Policy won't just cut. It's, it's good. Technology, policy, they're good things. This is why the left loses their minds and says, cringe, cringe, oh, it's so bad. And they try and go after anyone who is producing content. And I will stress this too. This is why even though Tom McDonald may be one of the greatest musicians of our generation, I know, I know, I'm maybe a little hyperbolic. I think Tom McDonald is a genius. His lyrics impress me just like, man. And his latest song, Fighter, is just insanely good. Seriously, one of the best songs I've heard in a long time. There's a reason why he's not hitting the charts. They don't want us to subvert their cultural dominance, but they can't admit it. They can't come out and be like, Tim Cast put out a really good song. We better stop him or else they can only be like, cringe. It's really bad. Don't listen. It's so awful. And boy, do they freak out about it. I'm not saying I put out the best song in the world and maybe you don't like it. That's fine. And if you don't like it, you probably shouldn't support it. But I'm going to keep producing content. I'm going to keep producing music and we're going to try to win the culture war by producing cultural content. Losingmymind.com to check out the song. Today is our last day uh, to promote it because by tonight at about 11.59, Billboard stops tracking and I'm just hoping. Fingers crossed. I'd love to hit the Hot 100. Could you imagine putting out, a, we put out a song that mocks and insults these, these uh, establishment shills in media and then we actually chart in the Hot 100 with a song that is saying you are liars, you are manipulators, and you do not represent us. It'd be a dream come true for me of all the songs I could put out, that one making it. But anyway, I digress. Here's a story from Time Magazine. Days after the polls closed, the Arizona governor's race remained neck and neck with both Democratic Democrat Katie Hobbs and Republican Carrie Lake waiting for hundreds of thousands of ballots to be counted. But as the final batches of votes are tallied, there remains a possible legal fight. The Lake campaign made clear it is prepared to pursue legal action over the election, potentially over the counting of ballots and the observation of that process. A member of Lake's legal team requested anonymity, said just that, that it could be the counting of ballots or monitoring. Uh, Carrie Lake, do not give up no matter what. I, I want, uh, look, we had Carrie Lake on IRL a couple times. And let me tell you, my friends, we've had many politicians come through the doors of the Cast Castle to hang out. And some of them make me roll my eyes and throw up in my mouth a little bit. I'm not trying to be a dick. I mean, I appreciate them coming on. But there have been people where they come on and you're just like, come on, dude. You know what? You, 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 look, I'm not a Republican. I am not the biggest Trump fan. And I'm actually falling. In, I'm very much in the camp now where I'm just like, dude, Trump's revenge is not it's not anything I care about. I, I understand the feeling people have like what Milo was saying, but I want to win. I want I want gun rights. I want the Second Amendment. I want that uh, absolute. And you need strategy intact. So um, I'm not sure Trump's the right person. I'm not. He's just he's, he's tweeting that he got more votes than DeSantis. He's complaining about 2020. And I'm just like, dude, come on, man. But I digress. I've seen a lot of politicians come in. They're not real. They don't they don't they don't express themselves in a way that makes you feel makes, it's, it's just genuine. Carrie Lake comes in and it's just like you'd think a TV anchor person would be the least authentic person. Like their whole shtick is, oh, no, not Carrie Lake. It was, it was amazing. I was really, really impressed. This lady, she's got charisma 20 out of 20. She's got more charisma than Donald Trump. I'm not kidding. Donald Trump is a powerful figure, but he's a divisive figure. Carrie Lake has all the charisma of Trump with the tact. And that's really, really impressive. And that being said, talking about border security is a core issue that I think really matters. So policy wise, she's uh, she's very much there. But let's read more. They're going to say such an action could ultimately focus on the final batch of ballots, roughly 275,000 mail ballots that were delivered in person on Election Day that will be counted on Thursday and published later that evening. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. As of Wednesday evening, Hobbs was leading with 13,000 votes. Well, let me, let me just pull up the map here we got from Reuters for the governor race. Currently, uh, it's about 13,000 votes, uh, 13,000, uh, what do we got, 13,066 or so? No, no, 67, sorry. Um, maybe, maybe my math was just right, way off on that one. Is it, is it, is my math? No, I think I'm right. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, 76% of the votes have been counted and Carrie Lake is down slightly. But here's the thing, my friends. Many people may say it looks like she's going to lose. Then you hear this. 275,000 ballots are absentee or mail ballots. Oh, whoa, 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 hold on. And everyone's now saying, yo, that's going to skew Democrat. Not so much. These are people who voted absentee, but either dropped off their ballots on election day 
or their ballots arrived on election day. Now, ballots that arrived on election day will like will will likely skew Democrat. Ballots that were dropped off on election day will skew Republican. And the reason for this, they say, it's a remnant of Donald Trump bashing mail-in voting. Many people are still receiving absentee ballots, so they'll fill them out, but they don't want them going in the mail because they're scared. I get it. So they went and dropped it off in person. That is a large portion of these votes. So we are going down to the wire, my friends, down to the wire. I carry like I demand that you not concede and that you never concede. I'm not saying she shouldn't. uh, uh, I'm I'm not I'm not advocating that she storm the gates or anything. I'm just saying you fight and uh, and you don't give up no matter what. Now, in the end, if it does go to Katie Hobbs, it's disappointing and it may uh, like the procedure will happen. The trans the, the power will be handed upon her as governor. And, and there you go. And I expect Carrie Lake to keep pursuing paths towards uh, a victory, but not I don't mean like I don't mean she should try to be governor like Stacey Abrams. That's cringe. I'm saying that she should continue campaigning advocating for, uh, you know, cleaning up voter rolls, cleaning up the election system. I mean, Maricopa has been a disaster. Arizona has been a disaster. She should keep keep the fight going. That's what I that's 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 what I mean. Not concede, not give up and just keep that message rolling nonstop. If Carrie Lake loses, I wonder, I wonder if she may be uh, take up a, a larger uh, uh, opportunity maybe a VP space. I think Carrie Lake is presidential. And I, and I really mean it. I mean, she, uh, the charisma is really, really all there. And perhaps it's spending 20 years in media that really uh, sharpens you. But I don't know. I don't know for sure. I don't know what should happen. I think Carrie Lake's rightful place is as governor of Arizona and for a long time. I think if she were to lose this and then try and run as a VP, it's not, it's, it's not, a, good, it's not a good flow. It's not a good track, right? We, we need to see Carrie Lake actually govern. And as a long, uh, a long standing resident of Arizona, this is the place for her to go. Now, let's talk about uh, where we are so far, because we do have, um, you know, look, Nevada and Alaska governor's races appear to be skewing Republican. If we look at the Senate, Nevada looks like it's going to be going to Adam Laxalt. So it's going to be a flip for the Republicans, which is good, but we'll still put them at 50, uh, 50, 50. Well, it'll put it'll put them at 49 and then uh, what are we waiting on? We're waiting on Arizona. If if Masters can somehow, I really don't, I don't know. He can still win. He can. If we're, but the seventy six percent reporting, he's down uh, almost a hundred thousand votes. He would need a large portion of these mail in ballots, uh, these and these absentee ballots to win. It's possible. It's two hundred seventy five thousand. If Masters wins and Laxalt wins, that's it. Republicans take the Senate. It's possible. Not to mention Georgia's going to a runoff. Herschel Walker could still win. Now, Milo Yiannopoulos last night said he doesn't think so. I don't know if he said this on the show, but he said the re- he, to- he told us the reason he doesn't think Walker can win is uh, the, the, the GOP establishment is not going to put money behind him. And they're already the Democrats are already going nuts, dumping insane cash into Warnock. The one thing y'all need to realize about what happened in this midterm. And Milo really nailed this. You know, sitting there listening to this guy talk for like two hours. Milo's a smart guy. He said, people are mad because this could have been a a sweeping victory. It could have been Trump's revenge. It could have been that catharsis that Republicans and Trump supporters were looking for. But the GOP worked against many of the top tier candidates. They weren't giving money to masters If they did, he probably would have won handily. But they were trying to, I mean, you look at New Hampshire and Bolduc. The the GOP does not want these people to win. It needs to stop. The Republican establishment has got to go. It's got to go. It's got to go. McConnell, McCarthy, let me me just stress this right now. Republicans, you are lucky you have me. I do not like the Republican Party. I do not like the Republican establishment and whatever. I'll vote libertarian. Hands down. Dave Smith's fantastic. The only reason I would consider not voting libertarian is because I actually want to see some victories. But if y'all are going to come out and be like, you know, Mitch McConnell, well, I got to stop Donald Trump. I'm not I'm not playing that game. 
The only reason I consider the Republican Party is because I want to see victories. And if you can't deliver because you sabotage your own party, then count me out. If I'm expected to lose, I'll vote for the, the for the for the libertarians. No offense, libertarians. The Mises caucus is fantastic. I don't think they're going to win, but I'd rather vote for them than whatever this garbage is. So here's what I want to see. I want to see every single Republican MAGA candidate that won refuse to support Kevin McCarthy. Say no. There was a great tweet. They said, each and every one of these new Republicans that's coming in, I know the party leadership is calling you right now and demanding that you pledge to support McCarthy and the other leadership. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Don't do it. The progressives, they tried blocking Pelosi and it was hilarious. I liked it when AOC won because she knocked out that that longstanding Republican Crowley. Now she's become the establishment voting for war and all that stuff. So it is what it is. But I would love to see Republicans refuse. Absolutely refuse. Vote for Donald Trump as Speaker of the House. Come on. Make them feel it. I don't know if Trump should actually be voted in as Speaker of the House. That would be hilarious. And a bunch of Republicans would vote no, but it would be funny. But uh, Pelosi's talking about retiring. I don't care who the Speaker of the House is, whatever. Just just don't support these people anymore. Look, I didn't vote for Donald Trump in 2016 for a lot of reasons. Uh, in 20, uh, 2020, I did support. Um, I don't think I voted Republican in 2018. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I did support the Republicans in 2020. I support the Republicans now. I'm not so convinced that I care all that much to support a party that keeps doing this. And if the Republicans don't get their house in order, I don't I don't want to keep playing this game. I'd rather just vote for the libertarians, man. So here's what I want to see. I want to see leadership correction. Donald Trump's apparently going to be announcing on the 15th. Milo's convinced that Trump is, you know, he's a little off his rocker. He's not alpha daddy like he needs to be. That's what he said. And he's saying that Trump's once he gets his mojo back, it is going to be insane. Maybe. Donald Trump, despite the pandemic, got 12 million more votes than he did the first time. He's a powerful, powerful character. And right now, everybody's saying he's a liability. He's a liability. I'm not convinced Trump is the liability, especially after hearing Milo. I think the Republican establishment is the liability. I think Trump is a powerhouse. And I think so is DeSantis. And I think between the two of them, you've got real power. Now, if the only reason DeSantis is going to win is because the GOP establishment stops obstructing, well, that pisses me off. So I'll tell you this. Get rid of the establishment leadership or you lose me. And I know all of you, and most of you agree. I know, I know the people who watch, there's a big rift between whether we want Trump or whether we want DeSantis. I've never been the biggest Trump supporter. I will vote for him. I, I did vote for him. And I will support him and his candidates because I want to see positive changes like fixing the economy, border security, no wars, get rid of the CRT garbage. DeSantis can pull that stuff through as well. And so in terms of tact and strategy, yeah, I think DeSantis 2024 looks pretty good. But I think all of it is meaningless if it's McConnell, Lindsey Graham, McCarthy, blah, blah, et cetera, et cetera. Just no, just no, 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 no. Now's your chance. I'm not convinced it's going to change, to be completely honest. Democrats lost. They lost. Right now, we have Republicans. They flipped 16 seats. Democrats flipped four. That means Republicans so far have a net gain of 12. And for some reason, look at this. I, I love this tweet from Hillary Clinton. It turns out women enjoy having human rights and we vote. You lost, Hillary. What are you talking about? This is this wacky, bizarro world. The Republicans won. Someone tweeted, yes, women love living in freedom and liberty like here in Florida. Yeah, it's funny. They, they like to tweet at me, 49 state landslide. Ron DeSantis had the equivalent of a 49 state landslide, 59% of the vote. He flipped Tampa and Miami. These are urban strongholds, went Republican. Amazing. Yeah, women love living in freedom and liberty, like in Florida. Ron DeSantis is a good leader. Absolutely. With the hurricanes are showing it. Policy is showing it. He's, his, 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 he's refusing to back down. Now, Milo said he doesn't have charisma. 
Well, I'll tell you, he doesn't have the same charisma as Trump. That's true. But uh, he makes up for it in other places. And I think Ron DeSantis, if he's if he can pull off what he did in Florida nationally, I think he can. I really do think he can. He got Latinos to vote Republican. There are suburban housewives who will run in droves to vote for DeSantis because they don't like Trump. It's true. Women, women vote and they don't like Trump. That's a reality. But they'll like DeSantis. Now, Milo said he didn't like that women were voting because they, it changes the way the voting system works, perhaps. But I think Ron DeSantis can get him. Now, I, I don't want to say too much, you know, uh, on this because I, I want to have a bigger uh, conversation about this later. But let's just give a shout out to our good friend Stephen Colbert, gloating over the GOP's failure to capitalize on Biden's pre-election disarray. It's hilarious. You mean, you know, Biden screwed up. You know, the Democrats are failing and you're laughing. You're laughing that you lost and the country is falling apart, but you didn't lose by, you know what, man, I don't, I don't get it. Look, Republicans should not be demoralized by this. Milo said they wanted revenge and they didn't get it. So they're pissed off. I'm like, okay, I guess you'll have to settle for winning. Seriously. It's, it's insane. Colbert's laughing. Hillary Clinton's gloating. What are you, you lost? <laughs> what are you talking about? Whatever, man. I don't, I don't know what Republicans were hoping to get catharsis. Fine. I get it. But I thought taking the house was like, Hey, there you go. It's going to be great. We're going to see inquiries, investigations, subpoenas. It put an end, an, 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 an end to this January 6 garbage. It's victory. Get your house in order. The Republicans won. Whatever, man, let them keep gloating. I think it's hilarious. They're gloating. I'm like, Colbert's laughing, having lost. You want to know what a loser is? It's someone who celebrates losing. <laughs> I'll give I'll give the Republicans this. They're lamenting their victory. OK, I guess that's respectable. You want to win more. That's the ambition and drive I'm looking for. Colbert and Hillary Clinton gloating, having lost. You're happy you lost. OK, dude, whatever. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all then.